A towering limestone rock pierces the horizon between Europe and Africa. With just a 12-kilometer coastline and a population of only 32,000, Gibraltar has a remarkably strong and ever-growing rugby family for such a small country. The British Overseas Territory has throughout history always been highly desirable, essentially due to its strategic geographical advantage. As a result of this, a strong military presence has historically kept a watchful eye over the rock and its inhabitants. The presence of the servicemen and women played a big role in the subtle assimilation of rugby into Gibraltar's local sporting landscape. The Gibraltar Rugby Football Union was established immediately after World War II. After the repatriation of displaced Gibraltarians, locals who had learned to play rugby either at English schools or whilst being in the forces started to play the resident teams from the Army, Navy and RAF on a pitch in neighbouring Spain. Initially, it would be fair to say that the military sides were dominant, but by the 1960s, the Latin flair, which became a trademark of Gibraltar's style of rugby, became evident and the GRFC started to dominate. The closure of the land frontier between Gibraltar and Spain in 1968 saw local rugby diminish in popularity. Fortunately, though, a new form of rugby was invented here which ensured that rugby did not disappear entirely. For many years, the only available surface was a hazardous gravel parking zone. And so, to avoid injuries, the players were limited to a non-contact format of rugby known as touch rugby. Frustrated and seeking a more competitive yet still non-contact game, the players removed their socks, stuffed them in their pockets with the ends dangling out and inadvertently invented the now popular format known as tag rugby. In 1985, the land frontier reopened and with it the local league once again became an important part of Gibraltar's weekly sporting calendar. The reduction in military personnel in 91 and the increasing number of fixtures in Spain throughout the 92 season saw the GRFC play against teams mostly in surrounding Andalusia. Since those years of instability, Gibraltar was able to work hard within the youth categories and is now proud to boast players of all ages in ever-growing numbers, as well as a local league of four main club teams. Rugby really contributes to the very fabric of um, Gibraltar society and the values it espouses, such as respecting authority, um, teamwork, encouraging others to do well and, and just having fun. Gibraltar Rugby's national squad now proudly claim a range of players as young as 19 years old. This means that the competition for positions on the national team is now more intense than ever, a luxury that the Rocks rugby scene has never experienced before. Gibraltar has hosted international rugby matches against Finland, Malta, Cyprus and Hungary, as well as embarking on several overseas tours. In April of 2018, a tour of Dubai lay ahead for the boys in red and white. The decision to take on Dubai was due in part to the fact that the rugby scene in the UAE is growing exponentially, largely thanks to the staggering number of rugby-loving expats emigrating in for the financial benefits, prospective career paths and warm temperatures. Professional players from rugby-loving nations like South Africa, the United Kingdom, Australia and New Zealand have flocked to the financial powerhouse and inadvertently contributed to the rise of the sport. Unpredictable crosswinds and strong gusts make Gibraltar's runway the third most dangerous runway in the world, meaning on some occasions, experienced pilots make the decision to redirect flights to an alternative airport. Unfortunately, this was the case on the day of departure for the travelling team, with the departing flight having been diverted to the nearest airport in Spain, resulting in an agonisingly long bus journey to Malaga. This delay that the nearly 70-odd travellers experienced meant that they had lost an entire day of rest, one that, for the players especially, could have contributed to climatization to the extreme heat and humidity waiting for them in the United Arab Emirates. 
To make full use of the time, the group stayed focused by running drills and plans during their stopover period in London before their final leg of the journey commenced. With having had only a few hours rest, the first selection of players set off to prepare for the first match against the Dubai Exiles. Yeah, the boys are ready. There's been a lot of downtime. Um, I think they're just itching to get out and play now. Um, you know, not long till kickoff. And yeah, as I said before, the guys just want to get out, and play, get the first game under their belts, and get a bit of running in their legs. Um, and then I think it'll be all right from there. Two guys on the touch line, and they're obviously in my ear as well. So, okay. for me, space starts at set place, scrums and line out. Okay. Ball is out if it picks it up off the grass. Okay. If there's line out to more, hand will go up. Okay. Obviously, hand comes down, you can come to the grass feet. Okay. The to be safe than sorry. If I have problems with your outside backs, I'll be coming to you. That's good. Okay. Thanks, Right. If you've got something that you want to tell me, just whisper in my ear, you know, be shy of me. Okay, just whisper in my ear, maybe I can fix it, maybe I'll agree, maybe I'll disagree. Okay, perfect. Okay. Yeah. 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 Just the captain. In terms of the prep and stuff, I think the boys are in a good place. Um, and hopefully, you know, we can. We want four out of four. Um, for us, you know, it's a big ask, but at the same time, we want to put the pressure on the boys to see how they see how they come off it. We said to the guys, it's a great opportunity for them. You know, you've got 80 minutes to prove yourself to be in a Thursday or Friday team. Um, it's entirely up to you how you want to go about it. We're developing pretty quickly now. Um, rugby's growing massively on the rock. So, you know, our national team, our local league and stuff is getting bigger and bigger. Boys are looking good in training. They look nice and fresh. I think we'll, we're up for this. Delayed travel with no adjustment time for the heat in Dubai didn't deter the Gibraltar select side in the opening exchanges of this encounter. We have Gibraltar and their orange and navy blue. Fierce battling in the opening 20 minutes from both sides, yet the score remained at nil-nil until a scrum is awarded to Gibraltar. Three phases from the base of the rock and Gibraltar push over the line for the first try of the evening. Jamie Ross emerged from the pile of bodies to claim the try and Jack Milton slots the conversion to make it 7-0 to the visitors. Right before half-time, a turnover attempt is deemed illegal and the Exiles have a line-out and maul on the Gibraltar 5-metre line. 
The more pushes over for a try from number two, Stephen Ferguson. The conversion from number 10, Josh Riding, is sent straight down the middle to bring the scores level at 7-7. After the restart, Exiles took the lead with the eighth man. Jean Boatas picked and went from the back for a ruck. Exiles Two excellent defensive tackles line. prevent Exiles from taking the lead until Gibraltar are penalised for an offside. A quick set of phases lead to the Exiles 12, James Crossley going over for a try to the right of the posts. Number 10, Josh Riding slots another conversion to put the home side 14-7 in the lead. The Dubai Exiles were hungry for points and so several tries, conversions and penalties for the home side take up most of the second half, driving their score right up to 33, leaving Gibraltar trailing behind with just seven. Gibraltar rolled them all from the line out and pushed over the try line. Consultation between the ref and his assistant awards the try to Nicky Timmins in the corner. A great conversion effort from Elliot Stone is pushed just wide, leaving the score at 33-12. The Exiles concede another penalty for a high tackle after the restart and everyone questions why there hasn't been a yellow card yet. Another penalty leads to a tap and go. Exiles hadn't retreated by 10 metres yet and so another penalty is awarded to Gibraltar without a card. A hard line from Freddy Cruz and he's stopped just on the line. Try awarded. The conversion from Elliot Stone goes over and the game ends 33-19. Really well done, OK? Really, really impressed how we stepped out, OK? It could have gone one or two ways, couldn't it? Yeah, we could have backed, we could have backed down and they, they could have run a few more tries in, but actually, do you know what? We've scored a couple more tries at the end, okay, and it shows great character, and you should all be proud of yourselves. To, to deal with what we've had to deal with over the last two days, the guys travelling and the things like that as well, it's, it's unsettled us, and to come out and to put a performance in like that is good. You know, we've got, to, we've got to really up our game. We've got to make sure that we're on the money, but also we've got to recover well. It was good. It was uh, very quite fast and oh, they were big boys. It was, <laughs> it was a different game to what we're used to. But... We could have easily won that game. It's a good learning curve, you know. It's set, it's set a really good benchmark for the rest of the week. Mornings on tour meant players were spending crucial recovery time in the hands of the professionals. It's during this time that the team's qualified medical crew consisting of Joyce Evans, Sally Holmes and Kelly Gooch all get the much needed time to tend to each player and any injuries he might have acquired. Measles is a lot different, some like stand higher than others and each injury obviously is different. That's why you turn it up and turn it down. How are you doing there? Okay? Well, it's pretty still. All right. The thorough process ensures that each player is able to perform at his peak, prevent new or additional injuries, as well as to analyse any problems that may have arisen from the previous match and gauge whether or not a player is able to continue. Often the therapy can be as painful as the injury itself. Definitely not good, so probably necessary. <laughs> This is awful. <laughs> yes, and in, in between the the actual ankle and the bottom of the shin. Yeah, you've got a stamp on this. Yeah. This is the Interex, and what it does, it finds the area that's damaged, it stimulates it, and then sends a signal to the brain for the brain to release neuropeptides, which is the healing peptide. So basically, it enhances the healing process. They had a big game yesterday and actually they just want to rest, so it's just encouraging to get in there and do it. Go okay, guys, keep moving, put the knees up. Breaststroke, all of it. Keep going back to forward. 
get them in there, just gets the body moving again. Pull recovery is really good after they've been doing after the game yesterday. So um, so just mobilise all the joints, stretches them off, just helps recover that a little bit better. The Eagles that we're playing against tonight, they, uh, they're a newly formed team. Um, I think they're, they're getting better as they sort of as the season progressed. They're going to be individually very good. Um, and yeah, I think it's great for our guys. I mentioned it last night, but it's great for our guys to play against these sorts of people because come Friday, Thursday and Friday, it's going to be a similar sort of scenario. Collectively, we identified a few things uh, from the game last night that we're going to try and implement into the game this evening. So hopefully, we'll see a bit of a uh, different reaction from the guys. We got Chuki playing at ten. Um, be exciting to see him play. We got Charlie Cruz at twelve as well. We've got a good blend, a good mix. Just be nice to see a couple of the senior players. Um, play with different players and, and actually those players that maybe not feature in national teams and stuff get a good opportunity to play. First thing what I'll do is line out, put my hand up, I'll do that's a good job. Okay, just to watch the fives and the tens, go up on the side. Just play by Ian in terms of water breaks. If we get if it's close to the sideline, we can get water on. Second half, we can do a 20, 20 and 20, first half. Let's get going first. And see. <laughs> After a hard session yesterday, um, I think today the, the, the team looks a little bit more settled. Lovely facilities we've got here. Uh, very important to get the tour show back on the road. And again, <laughs> I know I said this yesterday, but very confident that I'm going to get the result today. Yeah. Eyes up. We're representing Jib here. It's a select game, but this is this is any other game, okay? We're building. Let's go out there. The boys did a job last night. Let's go and back them up, all right? Straight from the off. Massive hits. Massive run. Let's start on the right foot. Build the score, just as Will said earlier today. We've got to go out there and take it to them. Let's put these boys to the sword, eh? Yeah. Okay? No excuses. Okay, it's perfect out there, and we're here to do a f***ing job. Yeah? yeah? Or no one walking. I don't care if you're blowing. You f***ing go. You hit that extra mile. The temperature dropped to something close to 30 rather than 38 degrees as the Gibraltar Select 15 kicked off against the Eagles under the floodlights of Dubai Sports City. It took fewer than five phases before the hosts knocked it on for the first attacking scrum on 22 for Gibraltar. It was pushed forward into the home side's territory, but unfortunately knocked on just to the left of the post, 10 metres out. Offensive defence was the name of the game yesterday, and it seems Dave Barley's message was more of the same as Gibraltar piled on the pressure after the Eagles scrum. Winning a penalty bang on the 22. Chucky Cruz stepped up and drove the kick dead between the posts, nil three to Gibraltar after five minutes. Gibraltar struggled to maintain possession of the ball from the restarts and were soon penalised for offside. Eagles, much like Exiles yesterday, opted to go for the line-out, took the ball off the top and ran hard towards the Gibraltar posts. Harvey Armstrong ripped the ball in the tackle and began a stellar run down the right wing, skipping two tackles in the process. He chipped the ball over the Eagles winger but was subsequently tripped. Unruly play after this saw the Eagles penalised a further 10 metres. However, no yellow card was shown for the foul play. Chucky took the next shot at goal, but unfortunately missed the target, falling just short. Turnover. 
Some more back and forth between the teams followed, with Gibraltar's defence holding very well against a lot of attacking pressure from the hosts. Eagles crashed hard up the middle and from the resulting ruck, which Gibraltar seemed to have turned over, a penalty was given to Eagles and a yellow card issued to Mark Henwood for illegally ripping the ball away. Gibraltar were then marched back for arguing the decision. But the tap and go penalty that was subsequently taken was pressed hard and Eagles knocked it on. Coming to the end of the first half, Gibraltar conceded a penalty at the scrum and were under pressure again inside their 22. Eagles pressed towards the line, but Mike Millwood emerged with the ball again after a penalty was blown for at the breakdown. Gibraltar tapped it into touch and the first half was over. Eagles kicked off the second half and it took less than a minute for the first knock-on, coming from the home side resulting in a scrum. The ball was spun wide and Gibraltar then began a number of pick and goes through the forwards before spinning to the backs. Albert Lodo crashed over the tackle of his opposite number and carried the covering fullback over the line for a try. Chucky from the sideline slotted a sublime kick to bring the score to nil 10. Matt Isla put in a huge hit but unfortunately injured himself in the process, being subbed off to be replaced by Iggy Cottrell, who moved to nine with Seb Triai moving into the centres. After a series of phases and free kicks, a good move down the far side wing from the Eagles led to a try in the corner. The kick sailing just wide to bring the scores to 5-10. Great defence around the fringes from Gibraltar led to another turnover. Albert Lodo then made an identical run to his try scoring attack and again run over his opposite number. Alas, the fullback managed to bring him down 10 metres short of the line. The ref awarded a penalty for a high tackle and this time Gibraltar opted for the scrum. Several resets later and the ball finally emerged from the scrum as Jib was just short of the line. A number of phases followed bringing the ball over towards the near side of the field.
Christian Quigley carried amazingly well but was stopped centimetres short of scoring on his Tour and Select 15 debut. The ball was recycled and following one more ruck on the near side touchline, Iggy Cottrell picked and went over the line to score. Chucky Cruz added the extras to bring it to 5-17. A number of phases allowed Gibraltar Select 15 to work up the pitch before Chucky attempted a drop kick from 10 metres inside the Eagles half. It fell short, but we went back for the penalty advantage, which sails straight through the middle and pushes the visitors' points further up by three. The game was called to an early end shortly after. A much improved performance from the Gibraltar boys after some well-deserved rest the night before, seeing Gibraltar win the fixture by 20 points to five. Yeah, great result. Uh, it's just what we wanted from yesterday. We spoke about, you know, putting in a performance, the boys playing well. Um, and we just wanted to make sure that they they uh, they come back, come away with the result, and that result they did. So, yeah, really proud. We talked about these one percenters. We talked about keeping the ball. You know, if we look after the ball more than four phases, we'll break them down. And that's exactly what we did. And we scored some really good tries, and we're actually really clinical on our attack, which is, I think, which is great for the guys. You know, to come away on tour, you need to get a win under your belt because it could be a long tour if you don't. So, it builds up nicely for Thursday and Friday. Um, we're looking ahead to Thursday now, and hopefully, we can come away with another win.